Hey folks, Quillyteen here, and welcome to a brand new Let's Play of Master of Orion 4, or Master of Orion 2016, or... I still don't know, like, how to refer to this game, because it's just Master of Orion. But it is the excellent new interpretation or remake of Master of Orion, very sort of feels like Master of Orion 2, but in a modern setting by, uh, Wargaming.net. Um, and I haven't played it in some time. In fact, I don't, don't even remember if I've played it since it was officially released, as opposed to playing in the various betas. There have been many, many, many patches since then. They've actually been really good about continuing to develop the game. And um, I am actually playing on a slight sneak peek of some brand new race DLC over here, which we are going to be using. We're going to be playing the Illyrians here, which used to be one of my favorite races to play in Master of Orion 2. And a big part of the reason for why I enjoy playing them so much is because in Mu 2, their telepathic ability was, well, frankly OP. Um, I often didn't play the race as is. I sort of used that as a base, kept the telepathic, and of course customized it because customizing races is one of the most entertaining parts about setting up your, um, your species in Master of Orion, form. but we may play them yeah, as form, is the here. Uh, of course, we can still customize the race, and if we look here, telepathic is an option. So let's talk about what telepathic brings to the party here. The reason it was so insanely overpowered, to be honest, overpowered. Maybe creative was more overpowered, but it's a toss-up. Tele telepathic is also insanely strong, because rather than bombarding planets, rather than invading planets, if you were in orbit around an enemy planet, you would just hit a button to mind control it, and it would instantly become yours. It uh, eliminated the need to build um, to build transport ships to be able to conquer planets, so you didn't have to produce that. It meant that no buildings on the conquered planet or any population was destroyed during the war, so you got all the population, all the buildings, and also they were instantly assimilated as opposed to being in resistance for some some time. Telepathic here in the new Moo is retuned and rebalanced to be, frankly, much, much more reasonable. Um, although, you know what it says? It Mind control enabled, actually. Hold on. I didn't notice that in the pop-up before. Was it? Was that really there? Oh, because it didn't have an icon. Is mind control still there? Oh, shoot. Okay. <laughs> Maybe it's still going to be crazy overpowered. We'll see exactly how the mechanic works. I haven't played this. I actually haven't played Master Ryan in quite some time, but I haven't played the telepathic race yet, so I don't actually know how it's going to be long. Yeah, I just saw the three things of the, the, uh, the icons, right? So it's like improved negotiations. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, a boost to security. You're better against spies because, you know, telepathy. Yeah, sure, that makes a lot of sense. And you immediately assimilate people when you um, when you invade a planet. It's like, yeah, yeah, that's that's all good and fine. It's probably a good thing they got rid of the mind control button because that thing was so crazy OP. And yet, no, it's still there. Okay, that should be a lot of fun. So yeah, we're going to play the stock Galarians rather than customize things because it'll be interesting to see that baseline. We are omniscient, which is very, very handy dandy. Um, I don't think the, uh, I can't remember. I don't, I don't think the base Galarians were omniscient in Mu 2. I can't recall exactly. Um, but yeah, this will allow us to see all the stars and planets and our opponent's colonies and ships right from the beginning of the game. You get a lot of information. It makes early colonization a lot easier. It lets you dodge space monsters a lot easier, which is great. And being able to track all enemy vessels um, when you, you know, you're preparing for war, for example, super handy. And we are a lot better at beam attack and defense because these are very warlike um, people here. Um, the other two DLC races that were added in were the Nolams here, Space Traders, which have significantly different art. Actually, all of the art, well, I suppose that's sort of true in general, but in particular, it feels these three races, the art's significantly different. Um, I mean, maybe less here. The Alarans always looked very, fairly human-like, but the whole face going on here, um, feels significantly different than, um, you know, they, they made a little bit of an effort to make the Alarans look a little less just like... Uh, oh, humans Lord. with a slightly different skin. The Nolams look the very Nolam different from the way that they used to. I kind of like it. They look, you kind of want to pet them right here. System. You know, like when you got a dog or something, and you, you just want to pet them right on top of the nose because it's like really short, soft Nolam fur right there. Take. That's what I want to do. He looks like such a cutie. Six eyes, interesting. And we've got the Trellarians here, which are like, what? That's cool. They worship, um, where does it say? Somewhere. Yeah, cryptic mythology, old gods, uh-huh. So they're like sort of the Cthulhu species now. They still have aquatic. They're still transdimensional over here, which actually themes very well. The Nolams have, actually, in addition to just being fantastic traders, they've got that lucky trait again over here so they don't get bad events. So fairly similar. So I don't, 
But I'm going to play the, uh, the Stalkalarians. Enough about that. Let's get her done. Um, yeah, let's say... I am just going to go for a medium-sized galaxy. I don't want it too, too huge, because I would like to see the end of the game in the not-too-distant future. I'm going to bring the difficulty level up to hard. I'm not going to go any more than that, because, again, it's been ages since I've played, and they've changed a lot in the game since the last time I played, and it's effectively going to be playing like a, uh, a normal race. Um, we'll start with the default post-warp starting age. That's going to be fine, so it'll start us off with uh, just some baseline tech and a couple of ships and things like that. Um, game pace classic, yeah, that sounds all fine. And then this is our seed, so if you want to replicate exactly the galaxy I'm going to be playing in, make sure you've got these settings and that seed in there, and that should be good. Um, advanced settings, random events, pirates, monsters, minor civilizations, racial traits, bound starting conditions. Yeah, that all sounds fine. Research speed, victory types, and Terran victory type. Yeah, baby. Um, start it up. Bum, 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 bum. Master of Orion. I haven't played this in forever. Which is a shame, because Master of Orion 2 was for a very, very long time my absolute favorite game. The only downside with Master of Orion 2 is that eventually, like, Ultimately, you did sort of, Forged in I don't know, figure everything warfare. out and had the optimal the path, and it wasn't that hard anymore. To numerous casts Especially if you had a really warriors, competently designed race. Learned philosophers. After being unified under the Grand Marshals, their society has been drilled ruthlessly into its present form, a swift instrument of military precision, both in mind and body. As their perception increased, the philosophers became aware of other races among the stars. Oh, that's a cool looking ship. Now the fiefdoms fan out from Draconis, eager to test themselves in battle. Dun, 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 dun. Excellent. So I realize the volume's probably a little on the low side there, but that's because I don't want the in-game sounds to be too loud when I get started, especially when you get in battles and you get explosion sounds that are just way too loud and kind of annoying. Um, are we starting? There we go. Whoop. Hail to you, Grand Marshal. My name is Yarasi, your aide de camp. My duties are to assist you with logistics and surveillance during this campaign. It's an honor to serve at your side. You know, I have to say, it is quite cool that the advisor messages are all customized by race. It's like, I was just going to turn this off. I'm like, no, no, I don't need the advisor. But now it's, I sort of like, do we want to hear more of this audio over here? Um, I'll just say, okay, thanks for now. We'll see if it gets annoying. In particular, uh, leaders are a thing that I believe has been added to the game since I last played, as well as espionage. So I may actually want the pop-ups for that, just to give me a little bit of context. I suspect it'll probably be pretty easy to figure out, but I, no experience with it. Um, I, you know, I think there's a different hover effect on these buttons since the last time I played. It feels slightly differently. It has really been ages and ages. What is this, level two? Oh, security level. In case the chances of discovering enemy spies, the higher the level, the higher the chance. A higher security level makes it more difficult for opponents to achieve missions in the Empire. You can increase the security level by assigning, uh, increase the security level assigning spies for counter espionage. Feels like there should be a buy there. Like I said it, right? You can increase the security level by assigning spies for counter espionage, increasing the colony's security level. But I don't know. So we have average security of 20% in our colonies. Probably our capital has some sort of passive bonus to that. So our average is increased. And then we have a race security bonus of 10% as well. Which leaves me at a total of plus 22%. What? Why plus 22% as opposed to plus 30%? I'm thinking there's the average security of the colonies, which is 20%. And then on top of that, we're adding 10% more, which brings us to 22 I'm betting it's just sort of written oddly there, but uh, again, I don't know. All right, yes, we do need orders of the fleet. That's fine. Mission. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and disable those tips. That's going to be fine. So colony ship, two scouts, and a frigate to get started with. And I do love the, the zoomy, zoomy, turny, turny on the ships here. And I have to say, my favorite improvement to Master of Orion, this new one, they were really faithful in many ways to Mutu. I think... And I've talked about this before, the fact that star systems are no longer point systems, but that have, you know, slight movement to get to the planets, and also these two waypoints to get in and out of a system, I think is fantastic. So, um, I actually want to deselect the fleet for now. I wonder if there's another way to do that without bringing up that menu. I just wanted to make sure I didn't accidentally move the fleet. Uh, because what we can do is we can take a look at the possible planets. I don't remember, there's a planet list here. Uh, manage uncolonized planets, wonderful. Um... So yeah, I guess we can look by distance. I mean, I could sort by size, I suppose. But it looks like... What do we have here? 
Ooh, artifacts, research bonus. Romulas is where? Right over here. So that's probably our... I, I feel like these are going to be our first colonization options. Um, barren means not really much farming. Lots of space, but we'll get back to you. Uh, da, 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 da. Out of curiosity, what's the... Okay, size is size, not actually population limit, because it's including um, all of the gas giants over here. Uh, maybe sort by bio. Oh, we know where Orion Prime is, actually. Oh, it's way on the other side of the galaxy. That's kind of annoying. Small Gaia. Yeah, if we sort by biome, you can actually find some pretty, like, high population planets. Um, Magnus Prime is not that far away. Large. It is poor, but good biome does give a food bonus, so we can get a good farming there in Magnus. Um, and I know there was some in Zarconia as well. Oh, is there someone that lives here? Capital and Starbase. Yeah, there is someone. Of course, it makes sense that we're going to be a little bit more crowded. Oh, there we go. We know about space worms as well. Well, I'm going to start off. I'm going to assume that we're going to want to colonize some things in Romulus here. Um, so I don't really need to scout the same way, but I may as well take one scout and move it here, just technically speaking. And then I'd say the rest of the fleet, I'm just going to go ahead and move it over here. And that's going to be perfectly fine. All right. Yeah, let's choose some research over here. Do, 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 what do. is the will of the fiefdoms, Marshal? You have very glowy eyes. Interesting. Oh, I can't rotate you. I was going to look at the pony... Oh, maybe it's not a ponytail. I thought it was, but I guess it's... No, no. It's like sort of shorter than my hair and an asymmetrical cut. Um, view tech tree. I don't remember anything about how the tech tree is arranged, and I'm sure things have been changed and rebalanced many, many, many times. Uh, we can see here the choices. I think this has been tweaked, the way the choices are presented here. There might be like... Yeah, I don't remember. I'm, at the very least, I think this display is different. I don't remember these parentheses before. Although, this, I remember, maybe it's simply that, you know, they tuned some other things about the tech tree. Maybe it was always there, but I don't really recall. Um, in terms of what weapons I want to go for, anything like that, I'm not sure that I have a specific pre uh, preference. We do, of course, have a bonus to beam attack. So we're going to want to mostly stick towards beam weapons as opposed to missiles. Um, automated factory is nice to unlock early. Research lab, also very nice to unlock early. Probably I'll lean towards, say, government here for the research lab. And probably immediately follow that up with the automated factory tech. Oh, I can't I can't shift Q in this game. Okay. Um, I mean, you can Q, but you can't shift Q. Okay. So, no, just go ahead and do, uh, do government. That's going to be fine. Set up some production on Draconis here. Uh, these little chibi people over here. Interesting little art. What are we going to build first? Um, I mean, we could build, you know, some buildings, right, for defense. Uh, do we go right for a space factory? I don't remember everything that you can do with that, but I think that makes sense. Either that or another colony ship right away. I don't remember all the things you can do with the space factory. So we don't have to worry about transport ships or anything to ship food around. That's going to be fine. Food. Okay, we don't want to run a food deficit, so we need you in there. That's fine. I could boost the production. Actually, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and move everyone over to research. We're just going to try to power through those two first researches and then probably work that first. Oh, yeah, you can do a queue like that. Um... I will probably reshuffle things. I may not worry about rushing the space factory, but rather fit, get the science lab tech, queue that up, and then build it really fast, and then go back to researching, get automated factories, queue it up, build it really fast, and then go to the rest. All right, let's go ahead and process some turns here. Move our ships. I do like that button. I think that's a very handy. Still love the effects of moving over here. I think that looks fantastic. And yeah, I don't think there's like anything for us to discover along the way. This, though... I guess we'll go and meet our neighbors. Andraka had some colonizable stuff, right? High gravity barren isn't entirely pleasant. We may still want to colonize this. Draka is also a good choke point. If we're going to build like a defensive area over here to sort of wall off our borders, doing that there would be good. Uh, Fod, why is why is the name in red? Red dot, red dot, red dot. I mean, that's not a race. What does that represent? Well, I guess we'll find out when we get there. And there's lots of fleets going around. All right. So you're all done. Uh, 
Yeah, you've used all your moves, which is fine. Uh, which one of these planets are we going to colonize first? Size 12, medium, medium, medium. Size 12, medium, 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 with artifacts. Okay, so the one with artifacts. And over here, yeah, no. So, um, the colony ship specifically, yeah, you're going to be heading over there once you get some movement. But no one's got any movement right now, so that's going to be okay. So let's next turn it up. We're about to get our science lab, or research lab. Move our dudes. Space monster G -N -N. detected. Galactic News Network. I don't remember him starting like that with his feet up. Long range scanners have detected a gigantic space eel lurking in a previously unexplored sector of space. Uh huh. All right. Okay, I guess that's us detecting this one, which is fine. What's going on over here? Space pirate. Victory chance. Okay, so these are space pirate bases. All right. I don't remember them being flagged like that. Sure, whatever. All right, so we're going to colonize over here. Boom! Hey, achievements! Yeah, clearly, I don't think I ever played the uh, the release version of the game because I'm getting achievements for settling my first, um, my first city or my first colony. So that's very exciting. I do like these ships. Kind of look a little insect-like, but that's okay. So, we do need to start off with some food. That's going to be fine. Um, government support facility is morale. Marine barracks also gives us morale. We do unlock the research lab right away, but I think what we're going to do is we're going to start with the government um, support facility because morale is only 70% here, and it would be nice to boost that up a little bit. Um, but we'll probably shuffle that production around in a wee bit. Over here, I'm going to change, you know, add research lab into the queue, swap these two around, and then grab, oh, is that only one at a time? In mood two, I'm pretty sure if you grab from the left, then you could do multiple people here. I suppose we could always just use the colony focus tool as well, but we're gonna go and focus on production here, get that done ASAP, which is gonna be quite handy dandy. Um, -da 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 -da. Yep, generates additional research points per current, exactly what we're looking for as quickly as possible. That is going to be nice. So we detected the space monster over here, yes. And we completed the government research, inside. excellent. The support facility is another thing that we unlock here. That's right. And then the research lab. And the next thing I want to do is unlock physics for oh, the automated nice. factory. All right. Fleet needs orders. So I'm going to send the scout over to the wormhole because I don't think we're getting any indication as to what this wormhole connects to, which is kind of interesting. Um, and if we go, say, over here, we should meet these guys. Now, that might lead to early war. Hey, what? I'm at least I'm just gonna go and stand on this waypoint here. That way, if anyone sends any scouts our way, we might consider just blowing them up. So speaking of scouts, yeah, I I think I'm gonna keep you right over here just for some vision. I mean, there's no reason for us to scout the same way. In fact, if we had started pre-warp, I wouldn't have bothered building scouts at all, which is an interesting thing to consider. So yeah, we're gonna just guard that position there. That's gonna be fine. Uh, same thing here. You're just going to go ahead and guard this position here. Just keep an eye out for things. That's going to be fine. All right, so we're rushing that research lab there. Government support facility, which isn't being built at all right now because there's no food. Um, I can't remember. I can shuffle people around in my empire, right? Is that is that a thing? I mean, I could do that before. I'm not seeing an easy way... Is there no way to move people between planets anymore? If I pick you up... No, because I can't... Hmm. Maybe you can't. I mean, it's not the planet screen, because that's new planets. Research, diplomacy, we haven't met anyone yet. Espionage, there's nothing. Leader, there's nothing. Blueprints, we're not going to worry about it right now. Fleets, path to victory. Maybe there's no way to do that. Hmm, how long is it going to take you to grow? Um, do you not get that information here? Oh, growth in 45 turns here. How come it doesn't say it in this screen? I'm looking for a 45. Seems kind of odd. 
we're gl growing slowly. I guess the, the best way I could boost the production here is just to start buying things or something like that. Hmm. Well, that's fine. We'll check it out. What's going on here? Unknown race. Oh, someone is colonizing. Yep, that's fine and fair. That's going to happen. So, can I go through this wormhole? So, let's do that. About to finish this science, this research lab. Do I need tech to be able to jump through wormholes? Yeah, gold over there. Oh, so are we... Um, so we're generating two tech for free from the artifacts. That's good. Okay. Research lab over here is done. Uh, so are we going to finish the space factory at this point? I mean, we've got rocks and stuff. I think that can all be improved right now. I don't remember if we need special tech for it. I think I will actually go and finish that. That's going to be okay. So I'm going to jump through this. I mean, I knew where all this territory was. I'm not sure if that opened up any new info or not. I'm curious, if I tell you now to go, say, back over here, will you go through the wormhole to do that? Oh, you will. All right, well, I mean, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to meet someone at the other end of the universe here. I'm going to go here. So we're going to meet, I think that's the Mershon, Fieris? Fieris? I think that's Mershon. So we're going to meet them, because they're on the other side of the, uh, the galaxy, and we're unlikely to get into any early conflict. Now, of course, I am a warlord. The Alarans are this very aggressive. Is GNN. What the hell? Galactic okay, so you just turned into network. a joker. I'm pretty sure these guys used to just be sort of vanilla static I before. The remains of a long-lost Orion facility. Whether this was an advanced research facility or a particularly well-built hotel and casino, it is too early to tell. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Oh, level one. So our average drop down. And yes, yeah, so that race security must be a modifier after the average security. So it seems like this display could be written a little bit differently, but yeah, whatever. So we are going to go ahead and finish the space factory at this point. Um, actually, it would be nice to time it out a little bit more efficiently, right? Six turns and three turns, because the next thing I'm going to want to do is build um, an automated lab. Also, you're, you do have some production fall off, right? The first person is giving us three production, but the others aren't quite doing as much. Now we're at 4 of 4, so we'll finish the space factory at the same time we can start building the automated mines, and that sounds pretty sweet. Yeah, you're going to sit around there, which is good. We are going to want to do some more colonization soon, but not necessarily yet. Actually, we may want to limit how much colonizing we're doing, and given our mind control potential, which used to require, what, like at least cruiser level um, ships or something like that. Like, maybe we can just go and conquer Zarconia. Who is this, though? Is this a... This might be a minor race. Because here's Mentar Prime. I bet you that's a minor race. I should go and meet them. Okay, let's do that. Uh, space factory done over here at the same time as our tech. So you can build an automated factory. Excellent. So, yes, yeah, start building that. That's going to be good. Over here, I want to change the queue. I mean, not that we've put any work in yet. I want to get the automated factory first. And I'm going to want to buy this. We're going to need to wait for some more money to come in. But I'm going to want to buy this to give this place a little bit of passive production. I mean, I suppose I could do this. But then our people are starving, so that doesn't sound good. Oh, there's, I mean, there's the growth bar. Again, we're not getting the, the amount of time. Oh, is this it? 37? There's your growth number. Okay. All right. I was missing that. Okay. Do, do, do. So, did we meet you? Welcome, Hello. stranger. I am the Empress of the Mershon Pride. If you scratch our backs, we'll scratch yours. We're going to scratch your back with laser beams. Pew, pew. Uh, so, that's it. Just goodbye now. Okay. But we have gone and met someone, so that's a thing. The Physics research complete. A new insight. Also unlocks neutron blasters. More powerful than lasers. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll upgrade, just upgrade all for now. What That's going to be fine. Fiefdoms, Marshall. We'll have to do some proper redesign at some point. Spy Center, Xeno Diplomacy. Um, improves communication with other races, allow more fluid dialogue, and opening new avenues of negotiation. I don't know if we care about that quite yet. Ah, Civil Transports allows you to re uh, relocate people. 
So you build them and you actually, do you physically move them around? I don't remember that. Then you get the colony base, which is a lot easier. Colony ships deploy this life sheltering structure when settling a new colony. Colony base helps kickstart a new colony's uh, development and is especially important for settling inhospitable planets. Actually, I don't remember that at all. I wonder if you get the free colony base on the planet we just settled or if it's only going to apply to future stuff. Also, the hydroponic farms if you want more um, food earlier on. Unlock the destroyer tech, anti-missile rockets. Tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to unlock deep space exploration for now because I think we are going to colonize one more place. All right, so this is a space factory. So, the question I have is, can I build something around the asteroids over here? Officer I think I can. Oh, yeah, no, we've dealt with that already. That's fine. I don't remember everything you can do with space factories, but I think that's one of the things. No, we met the, uh, or we spotted the Mershon Resistant over here. Or not the Mershon. The uh, Cylon. The Cylon he shouldn't use his mouth to talk. I think it would be a lot cooler if it was just a psychic thing. So move what everyone. You thought was another primitive planet mm -hmm. appears to be teeming with life. Its dominant civilization, the dog-like Zarks, welcome you with crude barking noises. I don't think minor races were in last time I played. This race will provide the protecting race with three food units per turn to all the colonies in this system. Okay. Can I still colonize this planet? I don't think so. So, are these places worth colonizing? Well, it is ultra-rich. The barren part means you don't get any food here, but if we're getting more food in this system, that's quite nice. Same thing here. Volcanic is bad, but it's abundant minerals, and it's got dark quartz, so that's okay. Uh, and that's just a gas giant. Uh, biome gas giant description. I'm working on a press build, so there might be some things going on here. Can I really settle a gas giant? Sort of implies I can that might not be a bad system to uh, to take I'm gonna go ahead and leave the frigate right there keep an eye on this area and we'll see what's what well I guess you could find out so zirconia 4 is it in the list of these planets it is no the population number is blanked out maybe with a tech or something like that there's gonna be a possibility but yeah zirconia prime we may want to um we may want to, uh, to settle that, just to claim the system. That's a good idea. Oh, uh, auto-resolve. Right, scouts can't actually fight. So these are now spawning units over here, is I think what's going on. i got to remember that. Uh, I don't know if they're going to come after me. I'm wondering if I should actually... Um, come back with this frigate over here okay what's the deal with my other scout am i not getting prompted to make my scout do something mm. you're just stationed over here but i didn't tell you to guard or anything like that you're just literally not doing anything well isn't that swell why don't you go work your way over here so you can meet the um uh the mechlon All right, automated factory. I still need 400 credits for that. And I mean, I could tweak tax rates and do different things, but I don't think so at this point. I mean, well, we don't have any rebellion going on yet. Okay, at five, I would. At four, I don't. I don't remember if it affects like work rates or anything like that. Yeah, I'm not really seeing it. So we'll go to four. We'll get a few extra credits for now. That's gonna be fine. You're building your automated factory. That's going to be okay. All right. Well, I guess that's that's a good start. Um, again, I'm having to relearn everything. It's basically like I've never played this game before. So we're going to see how that goes. Uh, it'll be interesting. I'm curious to see exactly how this system works and what the deal is with Zarconia 3. As far as I can tell, um, where is it? Planets. Uh, right? We're sorting my name. Zarconia 3 is not in the list of colonizable planets, so I can't do that. I don't know if I can conquer them. I don't know if I can brain control them. I actually don't know. Uh, I don't remember if in my uh, race trait... Actually, I don't know if there's a way to gain access to that at this point, right? Like, my own race? 
and the species traits. I don't know if I can refer to that and if it says anything more about mine control and what size ships I need. So we'll see how that goes. But uh, for now, well, thank you very much for watching. I hope you're going to enjoy this series. Shouldn't take too, too long to play through. And assuming I'm, you know, I have to start playing at a reasonable pace. Um, this is a game that's relatively fast to play. So we'll see. Uh, we'll, we'll see how quickly we can finish this. Thanks for watching. See you next time.